Hello, welcome back to Vacations in Florida and beyond. We're in southern Montana at the Little Bighorn National Monument. So come join us so we can see all the locations of where the battle took place back in the 1800s. guide we got fairly explanative but a little difficult to understand but we'll just walk through and figure it out step by step this is where uh, soldiers fell not where they're buried that's where they died and that one right there we'll zoom in is uh, one of the brothers to Colonel Custer Austin Custer Here's a memorial. These are the American soldiers that fell here. Turn around. Here's where all the soldiers fell. In this area, that was Colonel Custer. And if you look in the middle, there's one with black on it. That's Colonel Custer where he fell.
Now up there is Custer's last stand area. And then between here and there, you can see some markers. These are all where soldiers and Indians fell. Here's a few right here. Unnamed. Based on what I've read, they were put in shallow graves about a foot deep to 18 inches deep, which was Custer's. They actually buried them a little deeper. We'll come down here. I think these were two Indians, Phil. But they were uh, all exhumed and sent to private cemeteries later on. There may be a few left under the marker way over there. I will say this is not smooth terrain. I can't imagine anybody walking if they weren't on a horse, which most of them weren't, having to run and fight, duck down. It's a pretty punishing area, especially if it was hot at the time. But there are markers just strewn everywhere down here, way out there, which we're not gonna go. You have to hike to get down to those areas, but it goes all the way down to a creek. We've got an Indian marker here. Lame white man, one of the main Indians. And then over here we got Noisy Walking. That's their actual name above that. There's no way I'm gonna try to attack that name. So it was in June, June 25th. It's the end of July right now, July 30th today. And it's pretty hot. It's up around 90. But I mean, it's, just, it's not flat at all. A lot of places for people to hide with the hills, which I'm sure they used. But just to think back, 150 plus years. how steep it is here too. Alright, the markers we saw belong to Lame White Man, which is a picture there. And Noisy Walking. Picture here. Just on the other side of the crest of this hill where we just were. Many more markers. But well, we're gonna check these all out on our return trip back. It's about a five mile trip. There's lots and lots of markers. According to this, 7,000 Lakota, Cheyenne, and Arapaho claimed 1,500 or 2,000 warriors encamped on the Greasy Grass River, the Little Big One. They're all down here in the bottom. As Reno, Major Reno, was retreating, they came across these hills here and some, up to 30 of them were killed. And if you look right in the middle on that top of that one bluff, you can see two markers where a couple of cavalry fell there. I am not walking down that road. But this is the terrain they had to traverse while they escaped something else. And you can see the little Bighorn River down there past the hill. And a lot of the fighting took place down where those trees are around the river. There's a little thing talking about them. Free frame to check it. Right, this is the end of the five mile trail that you drive out to. And there's a little hiking path that goes all the way around. There's a parking lot. Memorial. So we're gonna go over here and see what occurred. is the 
battlefield, the visitor center, museum, and everything is. And then you got this other end where the retreat, or the major uh, Reno Shrine for retreat, occurred uh, five miles away. And it was that far, lost about 30 soldiers. But uh, he had a cabin there to survive. Straight across in the little valley there. There's a couple. That's where we were. Those folks were. We really tried to use the hills for an advantage, but fortunately, some of them did. It was about 19, 26, or 28 before they finally resolved all the little problems between them and the treaties with the Indians. And over here we see this marker, this little area. This is where the new troop, Captain French's reinforcements, came in and reinforced the line. And you can see the view they had, so they actually had a bit of an advantage right here. And in this location, a uh, makeshift field hospital was set up. And I see a red cross on that marker down there, so that had to be where the hospital was set up. This is a location, you can see a little raise in the ground, where trenches were built, or dug out, I should say. And they used everything available. They only had four shovels, they used mess kits, and everything else available to them. They got a trench covered. They were kind of surrounded down here as well. The Indians were taking rifles from dead soldiers and using them against them. But way down there, there's a couple of Indian markers where they fell. This is kind of behind the trench, so I don't know which direction they were facing if it was out over that hill there. Needs to come up this way on both sides, who knows? Didn't really say. This is looking down from their positions. They were all suffering from lack of water. You had the river down there, but it was quite a trek to get all the way down that ravine to the river. See the way out there. Not to mention taking a chance with any, it's just all over the place. Here's a couple of memorials. I believe these people are laid to rest here. This is Private Thomas E. Metter, killed day after the Custer's last stand battle. Then you got Private Julian Jones, Julian D. Jones, on the same day. Furthest out you go. This is where Long Road died. So you can see that's where those other two uh, sites for Indians that passed away fell. And here's looking back up at the hills. So they were everywhere. They were coming up all over the place. And there's more actually down the hill. The cell shaped trench was restored in 1958. They found skeletal remains, buttons, scraps of uniform cloth. That we go through a three metal there. there. They're thinking it was likely Private Jones and Thomas Meter that we saw earlier. It's another location where remains were discovered in 1958 from uh, members of Company A. Horses and all kinds of other remains were buried here also. All right, correction. They kind of mismarked one of the markers. This is that last site where soldiers were found. Died between the 25th and 26th of June. And if you look up there, you can see where that field hospital was. So it's quite possible that whoever died at that hospital or nearby was probably brought down here and buried. And we were came from up there with those folks were coming. So you can see how spread out this area was. Alright, there's a marker. They're owning a pit they had thrown all the rifles into. 
I don't know if it's where that grass was or if it's over here. Kind of a hole right there, so I'm not sure if that's it. That's what that is. That was discovered in 1958. That's what. Okay, right here I do see a shallow depression and it stays up easy. This is an unrestored rifle pit that was the other guy, robot check. This is where Custer split up into three groups. That nice shot of horses down there that we got a little earlier. You see more of them out there? And apparently initial battle started here. They call this a coulee. At the bottom of the hill is kind of more like a valley, but I guess if you don't have big mountains, it's a coulee. And then if you go this way and around that hill, that's where the memorial is. Here's where another battle took place, and you can see some monuments. Oh, okay, here it is on this side. So these are unmarked. Got numbers on the back, though. That's 138. I didn't notice that before. 139, so that one's got to be 140. Where men failed. Yep. This is where lame white man had a battle. I had some across the road over there too. We'll check them out here in a minute. But so far, none of these have names on them. They were stripped of all the clothing and the gear. That one doesn't have a marker number. That's 141. So that had to be 142 and 43. Make sure nobody's coming down the road. Otherwise, they'll make a marker for me. All right. Also unnamed. There's a brick and stuff here. No number on the back of this. 137 on that one there, so we probably counted these before, the ones up top there. And if you look straight out, that's where the battlefield monument is. Okay, there's a trail heading down from this point. I'd say besides the memorial battlefield, this is where the majority of the soldiers fell. trying to fight on this slope we probably had Indians coming from all around especially over the top of that hill we were just at we're all falling on the same thing If you're like us, you get hungry, you want to grab something for lunch or dinner when you get down over there at the battlefield. She's happy, she ate. <laughs> right there. Look for that sign. It's on the side of the road and it's right across from the battlefield, right across the road is the battlefield park. And they got some cool stuff here, but we had bison burgers, they had specials, they got burgers, sandwiches, a lot of cool stuff and a huge gift shop. TP Making Supplies are located here. Got a little mini fort and a whole array of TPs out here. 
All right, Dan is going to take a look inside our next RV. Take my shades off. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's all blue in here. Well, it needs some patching now. Yeah. These things are like 2,000 bucks, but they have them in the uh, kits you can make these. I'm sure they don't come with the wood. That's how they have the wood. Yeah, they got extra wood for you out here. There's like a blue tone down here. I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, there's your teepee. Oi! Come on, little mama. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>